and it's just gone 25 past seven. We are talking transhumanism and biohacking. Ben has just given you the, the lowdown on what biohacking is, but now I would like to speak to David Wood, who organises London Futurist Group with over 7,000 members who are also interested in the future and how it's going to be shaped through technology. Hello, David Wood. Hello there. It's good, good evening, to speak to you, Sasha. You all right? I'm fine, thanks. Yes. Good, good. So um, I'm looking forward to this conversation. I'm Me really... too. <laughs> so I'll start with the basics. Like, what made you start London Futurists? Well, the future is coming faster than it used to be. You know, a long time ago, the future was something you might get in the 23rd century in Star Trek, <laughs> or it might be something that happens to your grandchildren. But in my professional life, I saw how quickly computers and then smartphones were changing the world. And other people can see that uh, there might be artificial intelligence or body modifications, uh, implants, all kinds of things might be happening sooner than expected. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to discuss quite carefully what's science fiction and what could be reality. Yeah. And it's also important to try and figure out, well, would there, some of these future things be good or bad? And our first reactions are wow or uh -huh. oh, yuck. Both these three-letter words can be misleading because they tend to be grounded in our experience of the past. And in the future may have quite different possibilities. Okay. So that's what London Futures is to do. It's to have a serious discussion on possible radical scenarios for the quite okay. near-term future. So, David, what does reshaping the future look like to you and your members? Well, I have to say, members have lots of different views. There's no one set of uh, clear uh, scenarios that everybody buys into. It, the more important thing is to have an open mind to discuss it. Mm -hmm. But quite often it sees uh, growth in artificial intelligence, on the one hand, having a greater role. It already has a great role in many parts of our lives and it recommends not only books to us, it recommends uh, what we should watch next in our streaming media, it recommends who we should hook up with for new uh, relationships, but that's just the start to what we might see. So and th then there's changes in our health. There might be that we could not only rub things on our skin to make us look younger, but we might have uh, modifications to our biology. We might have uh, interventions on a regular basis to clean up damage that's accumulated. And so we might get uh, rejuvenated. So one possibility is that we would have uh, youthfulness for as long as we want to, instead of mm. our bodies getting Super. weaker. All right, how are you feeling? I'm good. Yeah. So just get nice and relaxed. See, I nice heard something loose loose about that, yeah, this whole so live on. forever. And this one it felt was fine. more on the lines of transferring the human consciousness into an AI machine or, a, let's say, a robot. Is that what some of the things that you guys are talking about in terms of living forever? Or are you literally talking about keeping the, 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 the vessel that we already have and just modifying that and injecting it with things? What, how does that work? Well, there are two different uh, sets of ideas. There's a kind mm. of... Uh, life extension within our current bodies or improved versions of our bodies. And then there is the more speculative and probably further out possibility that we might uh, move our minds into other bodies or robots, as you call them. And uh, some people think, well, that would be them. Other people are nervous that what you would end up with, if it was possible, would be a mm -hmm. copy, a bit mm -hmm. like a clone. You know, if a clone is made from you, uh, you are not your clone. It would be a different person who had the same memories as you, but it wouldn't be you. Yeah. So we should discuss that uh, as well. And for the short term, what most people are looking to is modifying our existing bodies to make them uh, healthier for longer. Have you ever modified your own body? Well, uh, there's all kinds of things we do. I had my eyes lasered 10 years ago, so that wasn't me doing it. Okay. My goodness, it was a very good thing that happened. So I managed to avoid using glasses or contact lenses, which I'd done from the age of nine to the age of 50. For the last 10 years, I've uh, experienced near 2020 vision without. Okay. So that I've done. I'm not the person who has tattoos or body piercing jewelry 
So I'm not somebody who has experimented with having chips inserted in my hands, and some of my friends and colleagues have done so. Uh, an experiment, I haven't seen the particular pressing need to do that myself, but in the future, I think more of us will, will do that. Mm-hmm. Are you it's support- like we Ooh. carry a mobile phone with us, a smartphone with us, and it's very useful. In the future, a lot of the functionality will be probably inside our bodies rather than being in a separate device, which we might forget and leave behind from time to time. Mm-hmm. Some some would say, David, that you know this whole bio, biohacking stuff is is playing with God's creation. What what are, what are your thoughts? Well, we've been playing with the God's creation since the beginning of human history, as we have improved clothing, as we have developed uh, solutions to various diseases, as we have improved the environment so that we keep out uh, dirt and infections. So. Yeah, but this is the body. Yeah. We're talking about the body, not clothes and, you know, the materialism of it all. It's the the body. Isn't the body perfect the way it is? No, the body is far from perfect. The body is vulnerable in all kinds of ways. That's why we already do modify the body with vaccinations or antibiotics, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's quite shocking when people first propose that you might... uh, inoculate with a vaccination, give the, give the body a little disease, and that would make it stronger. And thank goodness we've done that. We have extended the human lifespan very considerably. If you really want to be natural, then you have to expect to be dead by probably the time you're 30. Uh, if you're a woman, you'd expect that if you had children, maybe five of your seven children would die before you do. That's what nature gave us, and we humans have used our good grasp of science and engineering to improve our physical situation enormously. But it's only the beginning. Lots more is possible ahead. Isn't the beauty of the human body just being vulnerable and decaying and you know and giving up on us and then we fix it and you know we can improve it but naturally why do we have to modify and live longer and longer why would you want to live longer wouldn't you want to just run it you know run the the natural course why change it well it's not compulsory if people want to become senile want to become demented want to become incontinent uh, and they don't mind inflicting uh, care issues on their relatives, then that's their choice. But, you know, I, I don't look at cancer and say, hey, this is nice, this is natural, uh, you're my friend, cancer. I think we should fight cancer, and we should fight, uh, as we've done in the past, diseases of infection. We fought tuberculosis, we mm-hmm. fought smallpox. In the future, we will fight, and we already are, fighting aging. Mm-hmm. Why should we live longer? Well, life is good, frankly. Uh, There's so much more to experience. There's so much more music to learn. There's so many more uh, drama series to watch, (laughs) parts of the world to explore. My first love, I have to say, was Lady Mathematics, you know, Uh, and I love to get back to exploring more of the wonders of Lady Mathematics. I'd like to see the moons of Jupiter, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And eventually we might do all that we want to do and we'd be happy to switch ourselves off. That's a choice. But today, far too many people are having their lives curtailed well ahead of when they're ready to stop living. I mean, it's it's a human tragedy. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, I hear what you're saying, David. I really do. But when you when people start talking about putting chips in the fingers to pay for the bus fare or to get on the train or to get the food shopping, that, to me, that's unnecessary biohacking. Or is it just part of the whole, the whole picture? Well, I go back in my professional career in the early days of smartphones. Mm-hmm. And many people would say, there's no way they need to carry a mobile phone with them. It's an unnecessary intrusion. They, if they want to speak to somebody, they're quite happy to wait until they get home and they can use an old-fashioned phone. And they didn't appreciate all the benefits. And yes, there are drawbacks still having phones with us all the time, but there are so many benefits to having that uh, knowledge with us. So it might be that okay. in the future, having uh, implants in the body will do wonderful things, not oh. just allow us to experience new senses, maybe see new colours, maybe be attuned into the magnetic field, but also we would be aware more quickly of things going wrong in our bodies, things going wrong in our mental state, 
we would have much quicker feedback and a little guidance. A bit like a good friend occasionally taps us on the shoulder and says, calm down, take a deep breath, and maybe some of the stuff would let up us more quickly. Something's not quite right, you know. Maybe we should yeah. avoid eating this kind of strawberry or cut down on uh, whatever else we're doing. And yeah. this would be useful to us. I, uh, you, you... You've made it more, a bit more clear for me as to why people are looking into, you know, genetic or genetic modification. My apologies, but I have to agree to disagree. I still need to do further research and <laughs> dive a bit deeper. The beautiful, some beautiful points, but I'm still a bit. Mm, I don't know. But David, thank you so much for taking the time to share your expertise and your knowledge. Thank you. Um, we're going to dive my back pleasure. into the show. You're listening to The Tribe on BBC WM 95.6 with me, Sasha Simone, and tonight we are talking about biohacking. Now, just under the umbrella of genetic modification, we have transhumanism, and there's a growing community of transhumanists that are pushing the boundaries of technology to implant chips and devices. They're putting them in their bodies, as we've just discussed. I still don't understand why, but if you if you want to know more about what it is, take a listen. I have to carry around cards, I have to carry around keys, I have to carry around a mobile phone. I think transhumanism is the step to put all of that inside my body so that not only my brain is smart, but my body is too. It's the only way that we can progress. We've made all sorts of technology to do all sorts of incredible things, but none of them respond to my biology. I can understand why people might think it's an extreme thing to do. Um, I can understand why people might associate it with self-hatred or self-destruction, but really, I think it's a, it's a way to evolve. I have in my left hand an RFID chip, that's my door key. In my right hand, I have an NFC chip that is my business card. In the middle of my right finger, I have a magnet that lets me sense EM fields. I have the contraceptive implant and now two LED implants. I was in a very bad car accident that fractured my back in multiple places, both my ankles and both my knees. So my kneecap is completely 3D printed from the NHS. Um, I've also had multiple needles up and down my spine repeatedly and multiple procedures. Um, if I didn't have my chip in my hand, I wouldn't be able to easily access the door. And when one hand's full of your stuff, another hand's full of a cane, it's really handy to have a free hand free where I don't have to hobble for canes because that's my cane hand. Um, this one is my business card at the moment, but I can put on there all of my medical information. So if something happens and I'm incapacitated and I can't tell somebody my blood type, my medical history, and something goes wrong, they can look it up and they can see all of my medical information and make me safer if I have to go to the hospital. I don't think implants are inevitable. I do think they'll get better, longer lasting, look cooler, be prettier, have more functionalities, have all this type of stuff, and it's gonna be one more option people have. I love having my keys in my hand so that way I don't need to carry keys about with me. My partner, who could get the exact same chip I have, wants nothing to do with it. And that's fine, just different choices. I think we'll just have more choices. Do we really need smart bodies though? What is this fascination with, we need to evolve? And why do we have to use technology to do it? I want to hear your thoughts, 08081 00 9956. Start your, oh, text, oh, you can text, sorry. <laughs> I used to say that, it's like, oh my goodness. You can text 81333 and start your message with WM. I'm going to be speaking to Genova just after Sigrid because she actually implants, she does the surgical um, implants on people. So I want to find out from her, does she, is she playing God? Or does she, does she sleep or not? Is she cool with it? I want to know. I want to hear from you as well. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to The Tribe on BBC WM with me, Sasha Simone. I'll be here until 10 o'clock tonight. But right now, we are talking about biohacking. And now, throughout the show, we've been talking about people getting procedures to enhance their bodies. But now it's time to talk to Genova Rain, who has done over 40,000 piercings, implants and procedures, and now specialises in earlobe reconstruction and biohacking. Hi, Genova. How are you? Hi, Sasha. I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for taking the time to join me this evening. Um, no problem. So, first of all, um, what made you start doing implants? So, it was just a little bit of a natural progression of what I was doing currently in my job at the time. Um, I've always been quite interested in sci-fi and futuristic things anyway, and when a kind of 
this implanty gadgety thing came along that was already in the same vein of work that I did, I kind of jumped to that opportunity and was like, oh, this is this is really interesting and fantastic. So I just uh, yeah, just grabbed it and went with it. Okay, so have you have you ever self experimented on yourself? I haven't, but then I'm actually a massive wuss, and the idea of putting a needle into myself just fills me with fear. But I would happily let somebody else do it to me. That's a different issue. Oh, okay, okay. So it's very interesting that you say that. So are you the kind of girl, lady that says, um, you know, that just you rec- you don't recommend it, but you just kind of go, okay, if this is what you want, that's fine, but here are the risks. Or do you actually promote it and, you know, it's a good thing? I try and give people the, the full picture with that so i'll let people know like you said what the details are what it can do what its limitations are and what it can't do and also yes the risks involved and the healing periods required the attention it will need while it's healing so it's i like to think i give a, a balanced overview of that okay so so what is the most risky procedure that you've performed on someone um yeah, so risk is kind of um, equal to the to the extremeness of the procedure, I suppose. So I think out of everything I do, it will be earlobe reconstruction because that involves removing a small section of tissue from the ear to close the hole. So, you know, when people have stretched their ears, yes. if they decide to reverse that, mm-hmm. I can then remove the damage from the hole that they've, they've put in their ear and basically take that back to normal. But that's a lot more invasive than, say, the... Uh, implants that I do that only take about three seconds comparatively. Okay, so with this, with the biohacking part of your your job, what what does that entail? So, almost all of the implants we offer, they are syringe delivered. So very much like how you'd have a needle for a body piercing that would pass through your tissue. Um, this syringe normally goes just into the back of the hand. Um, like I say, about three seconds. It's a very, very small hole. Little plaster goes on afterwards and it's healed in three days. So it's very quick and easy. Okay. And what does that do? So there's a few different ones of those. Um, and as previously discussed, it's, it's RFID, it's NFC based. So it's to do with unlocking your doors, uh, better password protection for your devices like your phones, your laptops, your PC. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the very near future, we are likely to see that being able to make payments as well. But we're not quite there yet. Wow, wow, wow. I, I, it's scary. It, it was scary to see that we're moving so fast. It this is scary, is, yes, it is. Uh, remember, did you ever see the movie Fifth Element? I did. I love it. You know what? I have that tattoo on my wrist. <laughs> yes. What do you have? <laughs> Slightly off subject. The, um, you know her, uh, what is it, Mila, Mila Jokovic? She's got the, um, the four element symbols on her mm-hmm. wrist in little mm-hmm. dots. I've got that tattoo. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll write you for that. I can respect that. <laughs> so um, so what, what is in high demand at the moment? What are you getting calls and emails and texts about at the moment? What's everybody raving about? So I think the current most popular one, um, and it does change quite often because this is, this is quite a new technology um, and there, there are new versions of this coming out all the time, which is excellent. I, I love to see the progression of this. Um, but the common one at the minute is called our Next. And it's okay. the idea that we've put two um, older versions of the same chip together in one chip. So it just makes it easier. Instead of having multiples of this, you've now got one chip that does two of the same things. It's got a high frequency and a low frequency capacity in one. It just gives more versatility to the chip and gives you more options on what you can do with it in a single chip. See, that's scary because that's futurism in itself because now I'm thinking, okay, so it, there's upgrades involved. So say 20, exactly. 2010, you're going to need you know, something that goes in your arm because now you'll be able to watch telly on the track and you can just project a hologram. <laughs> you know. And then it's like, you know how they advertise like these smartphones and it's like there's how many iPhones or whatever or Samsungs and it's this, it pretty much does the same thing but yet everyone always needs the new model. So do you think it's becoming a trend? Absolutely, yeah. And in the same way we saw this rapid development of uh, smartphones over, what, 10, 15 years since we first had our Nokia bricks and look what we're holding on to now. It's fantastic. (laughs) I think we're going to see the same kind of progression with this. It's absolutely mind-blowing and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I don't know if you caught um, that episode of BBC Years and Years and there was a girl there and she had her phone literally implanted in her hand and she was making her call through her hand. I found that amazing. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) 
Check it out. Go and look for years and years. Oh, no. Oh, no. There's loads of stuff on Netflix as well. I'm, I'm sure you've probably caught up with it all. Um, but uh, the one that stands out for me is um, living with yourself, the whole cloning process. I know that's a yeah, little bit I different. That. But the one with them, Keanu Reeves as well, I'm not sure. And he transfers his consciousness into a robot and he has to test out, like, because synthetically he doesn't register that he's in a synthetic body. I'm waffling. I'm going off on a tangent here. All right. That, that's <laughs> me when I talk about sci-fi as well. It's all good. <laughs> but it's it's really interesting that it's it's in, it's today, we're living it, even though, you know, going back to the Fifth Element days, you watched that and thought, whoa, you can cook a whole roast chicken in less than 10 seconds. Yeah. And, <laughs> and give it five years, we'll be there. We'll be <laughs> Amazing. Exactly. I'm looking forward to that roast chicken. I'm excited. <laughs> well, Genova, I could easily speak to you for the rest of the evening, but I have to go. Same. But thank you no for worries. taking thank the time. No worries. Thank you so much. Cheers. Take care. Brilliant. <laughs> Bye. 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 Right, I'm going to close the hour with some Jonas Blue. Don't go anywhere because after the news, I'll be in the tea room with some of me pals. And if you've got anything that you've seen in the news or on social media that you want to talk about, don't hesitate to get involved. I'll see you after the news.